On November 1, 1982, paramedics in St. Peter's, Missouri were summoned to the home of Lloyd and Shirley Allen. 40-year-old Lloyd Allen had been sick for months with an undiagnosed illness. That morning, his wife said, he became violently ill, then lost consciousness. The coroner believed that he died from natural causes, but he couldn't be sure. On the death certificate, the cause of death remained blank. A few days later, Detective Robert Birding of the St. Charles County Sheriff's Department learned of a series of anonymous calls phoned in to the local news station. Lloyd Allen hadn't died a natural death, the tipsters said. He'd been poisoned. A canvas of uh, Lloyd Allen's neighbors uh, was initiated, and it was subsequently learned that the anonymous phone calls uh, came from one or more of Lloyd's uh, neighbors. Detective Birding did a routine follow-up to see if the phone calls had any merit. Meantime, authorities prevented the body from being buried, pending investigation. Hi, ma'am. I'm Sergeant Birding of the St. Charles County Sheriff. The neighbors told police that the timing of his illness was suspicious. Lloyd's health and behavior changed drastically after his new wife and her daughters moved in. To investigators, these neighborly observations didn't seem like much at first, hardly the kind of information to hang a murder investigation on. But they prompted police to ask more questions about the Allen family. Friends and neighbors told police that problems began shortly after Shirley and Lloyd married in the fall of 1981. Everyone was pleased that Lloyd, a sociable and generous man, had finally found the love and companionship he'd been looking his whole life for. It was his first marriage, but Shirley's fourth. After the wedding, Lloyd brought Shirley Allen and her two daughters, 15-year-old Norma and 12-year-old Paula, into his home. Now he had an instant family to banish the loneliness and a true soulmate in his new wife. Norma? 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 But winter brought stress and unhappiness to the family. Go on back to your room. Norma ran away from home several times and eventually landed in juvenile detention. The marriage grew strained. Then Lloyd started feeling sick. Lloyd went from doctor to doctor. None was able to relieve his symptoms or tell him what was wrong. He tried to work around the house and yard, but was too weak to complete any of his projects. Detectives learned that Shirley tried to boost his stamina with an iron supplement drink, but it didn't help. As he grew sicker, Thanks. he began keeping him away from other people. Suspicions began to center around Lloyd's new wife. Drink some more. Uh, the neighbors related to us that uh, she was segregating him uh, from neighbors. He, uh, he wouldn't be seen out very much. Uh, he, wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't be able to acknowledge uh, their hellos and their, their, their gestures of greeting because uh, of, of his, his poor health. And it appeared to them that Shirley was concealing uh, Lloyd. Then, finally, she cut him off entirely. A neighbor had come to pick up a wheelbarrow he loaned to Lloyd. Concerned about his friend's diminished health, he urged Lloyd to seek another doctor. The conversation was cut short when Shirley arrived. She ushered the neighbor out and later filed a trespassing complaint against him. Shirley's behavior seemed odd, but investigators couldn't hang a murder case on neighborhood gossip. Birding needed to discover a motive. He did. Shirley was the beneficiary of a $25,000 life policy. And we also learned that she was uh, the beneficiary of Lloyd's will. Uh, which had recently been changed. 
It is only natural for a wife to be named as her husband's beneficiary. But it was the timing, not the payoff, that gave detectives pause. Lloyd's health began to decline just days after signing the papers. That was something to go on, but not much. It didn't provide the kind of firm foundation detectives required to move forward. Birding hoped that an interview with the suspect would reveal something more, but he was met only with stock answers. Of, of course, she gave us uh, some exculpatory statements that uh, Lloyd Allen's uh, death was of natural causes. He's being treated by a variety of physicians for a, for a variety of illnesses that she described to us as, as depression. Uh, there was a, a litany of uh, medications in the home uh, that she said that he was uh, uh, taking for his treatment. The fact remained that the victim had continued wasting away with no apparent cause and no evidence of disease. Mrs. Allen was still a suspect. She had motive and opportunity. But investigators had no clues, no witnesses, and no idea what killed Lloyd Allen. Lloyd Allen was dead, and detectives suspected he was poisoned by his wife. But they had no way of proving it. The investigation stalled. This is in regard to the death of Lloyd Allen. Then when police got a break when a witness came forward. I don't want to talk over the phone. Is it possible? Four days after Lloyd's death, Shirley's daughter Norma called the sheriff's department. She told them she was in possession yes. of the poison. The Norma backed up her story with some evidence. Inside a brown paper bag, detectives found a wine bottle filled with green liquid. On the label, a handwritten warning read, don't drink. A warning that Norma told police her mother asked her to write. Norma said she wasn't sure what was in the bottle, but she suspected it was antifreeze. She told investigators that over the last two months, she'd seen her mother giving the liquid to Lloyd. Norma also told police that she'd witnessed her mother mixing gas treatment with sugar and orange food coloring to simulate the iron supplement. On the day of his death, Norma said, Shirley poured him a dose of pure antifreeze and forced him to drink it. Maybe we should call a doctor. Guided by Norma's testimony, toxicologists tested the contents of the bottle for antifreeze. A sample of the liquid was injected into the gas chromatograph. The apparatus separates a compound into smaller chemicals so it can be analyzed. Each chemical is displayed as a peak on a graph. The resulting peak was a match for antifreeze known chemically as ethylene glycol. According to toxicologist Christopher Long of St. Louis University, antifreeze with its sweet taste is a subtle, stealthy killer. The victim might never even realize he's drinking himself to death. Antifreeze would produce something um, like having a drink of alcohol. Um, but as far as a burning sensation or anything to warn you, no, it wouldn't. So it'd be the same as if maybe if you had a little uh, taste of beer or something like that, only without the flavoring. So you might get just a slight change in how you feel, but nothing really noticeable. But over time, antifreeze is deadly. As it is metabolized by the body, it produces toxins that raise the acid level of the blood. With each dose, Lloyd Allen's body and mind would slowly be destroyed. When your body chemistries change and your kidneys aren't working, it's not purifying your blood of the waste products. So that could, in fact, account for why he appeared uh, dizzy or a zombie-like or just plain dull. You know, his, his mind wasn't working properly. 
we can't seem to find it. Because so many of Lloyd's organs were failing, it would have been difficult for any doctor to diagnose the poisoning. In the final stages, even if Lloyd knew that the woman he loved betrayed him with poison, he would have been too weak to protect himself and too confused to plea for help. Scientists determined that antifreeze poisoning was consistent with Lloyd Allen's mysterious ailment. To prove it, the body was autopsied and tissue samples were tested. His liver, kidneys, and brain contained crystals formed by the breakdown of massive quantities of ethylene glycol. It was consistent with long-term consumption of the liquid. The coroner ruled Lloyd's death a homicide by ethylene glycol poisoning. Detectives had found their poison. Now they had to be sure about the poisoner. Well, uh... Norma was a troubled teenager who'd been at odds with her mother for years. The possibility remained that she had poisoned Lloyd herself to frame her mother. After a series of interviews, that theory was quickly discounted. Norma was truly fond of the victim and had nothing to gain by his death. With the evidence in hand, police arrested Shirley Allen. They were able easily to construct their case against her. A $25,000 life insurance policy gave her the motive to kill her husband. The spiked wine bottle gave her the means. In a trial that lasted only four days, she was found guilty of killing Lloyd Allen. Shirley Allen was sentenced to life with no parole for 50 years. She died in prison.